In this episode of Real Food Forward, a West Tennessee podcast, host Scott Williams gets the tables turned and is interviewed by Charles Schote, the host of 30 Minutes, as they discuss Discovery Park's upcoming exhibit on innovation in agriculture. Today, our special guest is Mr. Scott Williams. He is the president and CEO of Discovery Park of America. And, Scott, it's always a pleasure to have the opportunity to sit down and talk with you. Always fun to be here, even if we have a plastic shield in between us. (laughs) You had to bring that up. (laughs) Well, since you mentioned the plastic shield, (laughs) how has the pandemic affected the operations at Discovery Park of America? You know, one thing is we've been really uh, glad that we have 50 acres to make available to, to folks who are needing to get out and and uh, experience the world a little bit and, and have some stress relief. Uh, one interesting thing is the, the two lakes there at Discovery Park, uh, we made fishing um, available to people so they could come in and fish if they want to. And people are catching gigantic fish out of those lakes. So that's a fun thing. Um, of course, we have a little bit less attendance, um, but we have been focused on trying to uh, follow the rules and have people wear masks when they come and our staff wears masks. And so um, we've had a lot of people who've come and visited uh, for the first time who, you know, wanted to get out and they were looking for some place they could go closer to home. And, you know, so Discovery Park of America has been uh, a real um, attribute for people right now trying to find things to do. Trying to maintain some normalcy. Yep, exactly. Yeah. You had to shut down for a period of time, though, didn't you, Scott? Yeah, we did. We actually shut down on uh, March 16th uh, when a lot of other things went silent. And then we opened back up on June 1st with, you know, plastic plexiglass shields like you have here and um, masks and, you know, fi- uh, wear- taking temperatures. And, you know, we have a whole list of protocols from the CDC that we follow. Um, and, you know, it's not fun, but, you know, we, we have a mission um, to inspire children and adults to see beyond. And we're continuing on. With that mission through the pandemic, which we're about to turn the corner here, I think. I hope you're right about that. And I know you know, Scott, a lot of people in the tourism industry across the nation, especially in Tennessee, are they experiencing the same things attendance wise and and protocol wise? Sure, it depends on the particular attraction or um, place we're talking about, but. We're blessed that we have a 100,000 square foot museum for people to navigate in. And so we can limit the amount of people in each space. And of course we have the whole outside people can explore. So, um, if, if we were a very small, tight museum, we would have a real difficulty in, in reopening. But everyone, uh, around the country, of course, is experiencing the same challenges. Are your visitors cooperating well with the, the protocols that you have? Yeah, thankfully, um, we haven't had anybody, you know, we've had a few people who came to the door and turned around and said, okay, well, then I'm not going to come in. Um, and we, you know, we politely tell them we hope that they can come back when, you know, we, they don't have to wear a mask. Um, but for the most part, we've, we've promoted it pretty heavily on the front end so that people are not usually surprised when they get there. And we provide masks for them if they don't have one. And you just had an anniversary here in Union City. I did. Yeah. It was two years ago. I, I came and sat in this very chair very early on. So um, October 31st was my second anniversary. And so um, it flew by, didn't it? You don't look like you've aged today since I have then. I have, although I think the coronavirus has aged me a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we all have a touch of that. A little gray here and there for, for yeah. that. But maybe we're, we're close to getting out of this year. Maybe uh, turning the corner into a new year may not ever leave. It may be something we deal with from here on out. Well, we will always be a different country than we were before. There will always be, uh, before coronavirus and after coronavirus for those of us that have lived through it. Um, but we will return to a new normal. You know, once this is over with, I'm certain. And Discovery Park of America will be here to continue our mission. Absolutely. Wanted to talk to you today about the park and some exciting news that you have to share with us. I appreciate the email and information I received this week about the, the sneak peek that I get to take part in as, mm-hmm. as a member of the media about the new, is an exhibit, is that the right word to it say? Is. A permanent it's, exhibit. It's a permanent exhibit. It touches on something and a topic that is huge to this community 
huge to this area, huge to the entire region, and that's agriculture. First of all, it's a little bit ironic that Discovery Park of America, before it was there, that was a cornfield. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. we are literally sitting right on top of, you know, agriculture um, all around us here. Um, and we uh, – the um, the Tennessee Soybean Council – Gave us some seed money. There's lots of puns we've discovered as we've worked on this farming exhibit um, to explore putting uh, um, an exhibit on agriculture in our tractor barn that we had there with, you know, like 65 tractors. Um, and so we started the process two years ago when I got here. Uh, they had actually started it before, but then when I got here, we uh, continued it. Uh, we gathered um, folks to gather uh, who are in agriculture, who are farmers, who uh, work in all the different um, agriculture companies around here, and said, what would you put in an agriculture exhibit? What do you think um, the public needs to know about agriculture? And it was just, we had maybe 10 of those sessions. We met with UT Martin uh, professors of agriculture. We met with individuals. We met with kids. We met with adults. We, we hit every target audience. And it was really fascinating what kept rising to the top is the fact that people in America buy clothes, buy food, put fuel in their car, and they have no idea how it got there. And so we wanted to put forth an exhibit and create an exhibit that would talk about innovation in agriculture and talk about um, why what the folks around here that are working hard every day in the fields, why what they do matters in the long run, and why they work so hard at innovation and sustainability and things like that. Because by 2050, the population is going to um, have exploded even bigger than it is now. And so the food, fuel, and fiber has to dramatically increase, but we don't have land to increase. So they really have to work the land that we do have um, using every single um, tool um, in their toolbox to make sure that what they grow, um, they grow as much as they can and they can continue to, to farm the soil and, and things like that. So it's really been fun uh, to work on it. And, of course, Obine County has long been the top corn producer in the state of Tennessee and normally around second in the state for soybeans. Tells you about agriculture in this community here. Yeah, it's you know we have a lot of gins around here, and right. you know it's a um, it's a very agriculture rich community um, still today. And if you look in the past, very much so. Um, and so it's very much it's very much in our wheelhouse, if you will. Um, and so I think. Uh, people, people around here especially are going to love it. But I think people, people who come, even who aren't. People who come to Discovery Park who didn't even know there was an agriculture exhibit are going to be blown away by how cool it is and, and all the cool stuff they can do. Um, it's a million dollar exhibit, so an exhibit of that of that um, uh, amount of money um, is going to blow your socks off. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Scott, give us the name of the exhibit if you don't mind that people will be seeing uh, on in early December, right? Sure, it opens December fifth. And it's called Agriculture Innovating for Our Survival. And you're going to tell the story past, That's present, right. and That's future. Right. We, we go back a little bit. You know, the most of it is about what's happening today and what what um, people are preparing to do in the future. And so, but we do go back a little bit because it's important to see how um, innovation builds upon innovation. So the innovation that was happening um, in the turn of the century, in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s, it's continued to build to what we have today. And, and the group of men and women, you know, who are working in that in that field, there's another pun, right. in that field today <laughs> are, <laughs> are, um, are making a huge difference uh, for the people that, that will be dead and gone by the time the work that they're doing today will benefit the future generations. And this is not going to be an exhibit where people will come and see combines, tractors, and things like that. You're going to get into, I'm sure, the technology of it, the science of it, many factors of farming. Yeah, that's absolutely right. There's, um, we touch on um, all the different kind of areas. Um, we do have a few of the, you know, we had about, we had about 65 tractors you know, in our collection, we had a big number of them on display. And so there'll be some of the, some of those will be on display. However, 
Also on display, we have a deal with um, um, Case IH, and they're going to let us put on display their latest and greatest tractor that people will be able to climb up some steps and get in and sit and, and see what it's like to actually be in the sit in the wheel sure. of one of those great big gigantic tractors. So that's it's it's I went over and looked at it the other day and it's about the tires are about three times as big as I am. So it's uh, really really gonna be cool. Yeah that's that's fantastic. I was at the do we want to call it the groundbreaking of, yeah. of this event? Yeah. We had that day Congressman Kustoff, uh, Representative Bill Sanderson, many others were there to speak that day uh, and had a big attendance. If you remember, it was about 110 degrees that day. Yeah, it was very, very hot. <laughs> very, very hot. But you could see the excitement for this well on. Oh, yeah. And this was, I think this was in the smaller stages for the public to know about it was that not correct i know you've been working on it for some time yeah this the, that event was to announce the fact that we were going to have an event right. you know that we were going to have an exhibit and that you know we were looking for people who might be interested in contributing to it um and thankfully simmons bank and nutrien and many others stepped up um to make contributions and then also the people of uh, this area, we we had a program called Champions of Agriculture, and people could make a contribution of any kind, and their names will actually be in the exhibit itself. And a lot of people gave in memory or in honor um, of their loved ones who were farmers in the past. And you mentioned one million dollars to put this together. Yeah, that's right. It's a million dollar exhibit, um, and so it's it's of course anything having to do with Discovery Park has to be state of the art. Um, you know, Robert Kirkland right. spared no expense when he put Discovery Park of America here in Union City, and so we wanted to you know make sure that we can. You know, we're, we're consistent with that, and that what we continue with is that state of the art as his vision. What are the, some of the things that people will see when they go through the exhibit there at the Simmons Bank Ag Center? Yeah, I'll tell you a few of my favorite things because honestly, there's so much. Um, you know, part one, one place that really stands out when you think about the exhibit that I think people will um, enjoy is there's a section that talks about um, how farmers and people working in agriculture um, use social media. So um, if you're not a farmer and the algorithm has probably not delivered to your YouTube page any agriculture videos like these, but there are people who actually make more money on social media than they do on their farm. And so it's really <laughs> – so we have some little clips of some of those farmers um, from all over the world who have uh, – who are doing a great job – advocating for agriculture on social media. Same thing with um, Instagram. There's a lot of people out there who are farmers and, and work in agriculture, and they have some incredibly beautiful Instagram photos. Then we'll have a display of photos that will automatically come up on monitors, um, which is fun. Um, you know, and then and then there's some some more serious aspects that we look at. We look at how uh, technology has um has helped in the area of farm safety and some of the things there. And we've got a sample, you know, something that people who aren't in agriculture don't know about. I didn't know about this, but a lot of times farmers will jump into a grain bin and they'll start to smash down the grain. Well, sometimes they actually can get stuck in there um, and they can suffocate before they can be rescued. Well, there are companies... Um, that have produced giant plastic tubes, and we'll have one of those on display so people can see it, and we'll have it in a little grain bin so you can see how it works in that. But then we also have uh, clips from a movie called Silo. We worked really closely with the producers of a movie called Silo on this part of the exhibit, so that's a fun thing too. Agriculture is one of the most dangerous professions in the world. A, a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, that's absolutely right, and and the grain bin uh, problem is a challenge because a lot of times um, the fire departments in rural communities they don't have this equipment to be able to run in there and help somebody so you know people do frequently uh die from from that so mm -hmm. so we're you know we're uh sharing the information about that um that one one fascinating part of the exhibit to me is that we traveled around for the last two years at different ag shows and the the gin show in memphis and some stuff at ut martin and taking photographs of people who work in agriculture and so there's more than 225 photos of people who work in agriculture in the exhibit itself. So they're all over the place. So so people who work in, in farms and in agriculture in this area are literally all over the exhibit. Many people feel agriculture is those who sit in the seat of a combine or in the seat of a tractor. Agriculture is so much larger and expanded than that. 
so many spinoff jobs has to deal with agriculture. Well, and w- one of the things we did um, when we were first starting to put this together, we interviewed kids who came to Discovery Park, and we asked them things like describe a farmer, what do farmers do, would you want to be a farmer? And um, we put the video on our website, but the kids – knew nothing really about farmers. And when you describe a farmer, they said an old man wearing overalls and boots. That That's as far as any of the kids could go. And probably more scary is when we said, would you want to be a farmer or go into agriculture? They 100% said no way. So that's scary we, when, you know, we really need our best and our brightest to consider fields in agriculture. And so we do have a little bit throughout the whole exhibit about people who are working today in agriculture. Um, so the, the young people who visit uh, the exhibit will be able to possibly see themselves as pursuing a career in, in that field. You mentioned here about the Nutrient Main Stage. What is that, Scott? Yeah, we wanted to have a place where um, people could – People who work in agriculture, we want this exhibit to be for all of us in this area. So local companies and regional companies who maybe have meetings or have um, educational classes. We want the ag teachers in the area to be able to utilize it. It's a state-of-the-art stage with a state-of-the-art speaker system and chairs. And people will be able to make presentations from inside the exhibit, be able to uh, teach and educate. So it's really going to be a a nice component of what we're doing in Nutrien. actually funded that part of the exhibit. Uh, we're going to have, uh, you know, Nutrien also has an NASCAR, and so we're going to have a little bit of a video running um, on the screen about their NASCAR driver, um, who um, is known as the Melon Man, because he's a watermelon farmer. Yeah. So, so there's going to be a little bit of a video about him as well on there. Again, today we are speaking with Scott Williams. He is the president and CEO of Discovery Park of America. It's always a pleasure to have Scott in our studios. I know you are featuring some local folks also in the exhibit. Tell us about those. Yeah, we really wanted to spotlight some of the folks in the area and help tell their stories of people that are doing some incredible things. Uh, for example, we got Jimmy Tosh is in the exhibit. For anybody who uh, doesn't know uh, Tosh Farms, which is in the area, and a lot of people farm uh, for Tosh Farms. Uh, they're in Henry, Tennessee. They're the state's largest pork producer and the nation's 28th largest pork producer. Yes, and are. Jimmy Tosh knows his stuff. And so he really helped us a lot when it came to um, how we told the story of um, hog farming and pig farming and things like that. And that's one thing that uh, I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but those of us working on the exhibit, when we first started, we knew zero about agriculture. And so we did all we knew was what we um, got at the grocery store. So this has been a real eye opener to get to work with these with these folks. Another one um, are Matthew and Colby Gray, who operate Gray's Poultry Company in Obion, Tennessee. Um, super nice couple. And they're doing some fascinating, amazing things when it comes to technology. Um, and another is Derek and Michaela Giffen. A lot of folks around here know them. I actually bought a whole bunch of meat from them last year. Um, they uh, grow corn, soybeans, wheat, and hay. Um, and they also um, have added cattle to their farm so that they're, they're contributing to the sustainability. So um, it's, it's people like them that are actually making a difference. Um, Michaela is a big blogger and social media user. And um, so, you know, they're, they're also out there advocating. All of these folks I talked about are big advocates for agriculture, which is really important. We talked about the sponsors um, a little earlier, but this not only drew local sponsors, but you drew state, regional, and, and national sponsors for this. Is that not correct? Yeah, we have a whole list of sponsors um, who've helped us, but then also, you know, we we very very much appreciate the sponsors, but then additionally. All types of um, agriculture-related mm-hmm. um, organizations contributed to the content. So they, we actually flew all over the country and went and met with people, and they showed us some of the work they were doing in plant science. And you know, an example is the Danforth Plant Science Center up in St. Louis. You know, they they um, really were helpful at at getting us in the right direction um, on the content. You know, what what is happening? And we saw some amazing things happening there at their plant science center. Why basically did you think this was important for Discovery Park of America and this area? One of the the main reasons why it's important is that it's it's so crucial that people 
like us that are consumers understand what it is that farmers do and so that we can make good decisions at the grocery store. There are a lot of myths around agriculture. And so we, when we were having our focus groups, we heard the farmers over and over and over again say, I am sick of being positioned as the bad guy. I am not the bad guy. I am the good guy. And if people understood, then they would change their opinions. And so, you know, we really want to break a lot of myths. You know, people, most people don't know what a GMO is. I'll be honest, when I first started, if, if something at a grocery store, um, said, um, uh, it was no GMO, I thought, oh, well, that must mean it doesn't have chemicals on it. That's not what it means. And so people who come to the exhibit are going to be able to understand what things like that mean. We're not going to take a side because we're a museum, and what museums do is show you the, show you the facts and then let you make your own mind up. Uh, you know, organic farming is very cool and very uh, important and great if people want to do that. But we will not be able to feed and clothe the world by 2050 just based on organic farming. We've got to figure out how to get as much as we can um, out of the land as possible. So you're going to touch on history. That's right. And where we are today. And, of course, we know now with combines and tractors this day and time, all the electronics inside – of a combine and tractor is absolutely amazing. They actually see their bushel per acre production during the harvest. That's right. A lot of a lot of farmers get a lot of farmers start farming before they get out of bed in the morning. They turn things on with their with their well, smartphones. Sure. Yeah. Well, sure. And it's been fun um, riding my bike around this area when harvest was going on and actually watching all the stuff I've been reading about and researching and that's going in the exhibit to actually see it happening has been so exciting. Breathing the dust while you're riding. That's exactly <laughs> right. And and understanding a lot more, you know, about what they're doing and why. And the risk of being a farmer. Of course it's all weather related. Oh, and, and we talk a little bit about the business of farming and um show a ticker. We show a, a live ticker of um, the commodities being traded. Right. And, you know, a lot of folks don't know that a farmers, a lot of farmers borrow the money to plant the crops and to grow the crops. And then if something happens, uh, you know, they're in, they're in big trouble. You know, they can get, they can get, um, behind on their payments. And, you know, they, it's really important that they be able to grow as much as possible with every single season. You know, they grow the product, but the actual price they receive is in someone else's hands. Yep, absolutely. It's crazy. Scott, when someone visits the new exhibit and, and they leave, what do you hope they say to themselves or do they tell the person that they talk to next about this exhibit? Well, in the museum business, what we always hope people walk away saying is, wow, I had no idea. Because that's really what we want to do is inspire people. When Robert and Jenny Kirkland built Discovery Park, their vision was that um, people be insp- inspired to see beyond, which which what, what Mr. Kirkland meant by that was that people would walk away and go back and find more information. They would be encouraged to get educated. And so I hope that people leave this exhibit with a new, fresh understanding of what agriculture and farming means um, to the world and to go on and learn more, to to get online and, and look and maybe buy some books and to get more educated about where their food, fuel, and fiber comes from. How will it work when it's open for the visitor? Do you go in stages or do you just go in and and walk at your own leisure? Yeah, you'll be able to go in and and walk at your own leisure and explore the whole space. There will be, uh, of course, in the museum business, we say there are swimmers, skimmers, and divers. And so if you're a, (laughs) if you're a, a skimmer like I am, you'll be able to skim the whole thing and then go back and participate in whatever you thought was most interesting. Um, but if you're, um, a diver, you know, you'll be able to spend a good solid hour, hour and a half absorbing and digesting all of the content that's in there. Because we look at we look at all the row crops and we look at the livestock and, you know, the changes that have been made in those industries, which are significant. Um, we look at all the different science like we talked about. Um, and so it's um, it's it's enough content that it could really keep somebody busy for hours. How big is the building that 
this will be housed in? Sure. It's a 12,000 square foot building. Um, and so it's, it's been fascinating. I, I was actually in it. I go in it now every day because the crew that's working on this is from, um, Louisville. It's Solid Light is the name of the exhibit design firm. And they, beginning this past Monday, had crews of about five people coming in. Um, they're actually staying in the new hotels right next door to Discovery Park and they'll have big crews coming in, uh, until it opens. And you know, it's just been yesterday we had the first wall put up, the first wall graphic put up. So we got a picture of it and shared it on social media, and, you know, it was really fun to see that. So you're saying that it's still being built at this time? They manufacture it um, at their um, facility in Louisville, and then they ship it down here and put it up. So um, we have been, of course, the whole the whole tractor barn had to be air-conditioned and heated. It, I don't know if, if anybody noted when they were there before, it, there, it was hot in the, um, <laughs> was. in the summer and cold in the, in the winter. Um, well, so now it's heated and cooled. Um, and, you know, the floor had to be redone because when we moved all the tractors out, there were lots of places where it had dripped a little oil here and there. So mm-hmm. floors have been redone. All the walls were painted. So it was really freshened up. It looks like a brand new space. And now it's going back in and we're filling it back up with stuff. From your first meetings to talk about this exhibit to where you are today as we talk, are you pleased with where you're at? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't be more excited. Um, it's really, I think it, it fits in really well with the rest of Discovery Park, you know, all the different areas. And then because we're out there in the tractor barn, it needed to be substantial and it needed to be a cornerstone. Um, but we've also spread out further. So um, we've added wildflowers for the pollinators, um, and we're telling those stories. We actually have a beehive inside the exhibit that, that was put in um, about um, – about three months ago, and so so that it could get adjusted to the space, and it's glass, so you can look through and see the bees uh, making honey, and we tell that story. But then we also have um, all types of um, wildflowers and all types of shrubs that pollinators like. We're putting up uh, bluebird houses, um, and we're really working towards having um, having. People be able to come to Discovery Park and have a whole experience touring, um, touring the different areas related to agriculture. We have corn. We had corn growing. Uh, we grew cotton. We grew soybeans. We have, of course, we have a vineyard. So people can come out and really check it out and see it all. I know people are probably asking now: Is there any cost to see this? You know, it's it's a part of the overall Discovery Park of America experience that folks can get. You know, for the regular ticket price. Okay, tell us again, Scott, when will it open for the general public? It's open December 5th. That's this year, so just a few few weeks from now. Be completed and ready to go. That's right, and if somebody wants to come check it out, what they should do is, here's an insider tip. They should come to Discovery Park. You know, we close at 4, um, but then our restaurant's open and our uh, gift shops are open. They could shop for a little while, have a little something to eat, and then do the Christmas lights, which start. So they can uh, drive through and see the Christmas lights, so they can have a whole agriculture slash Christmas experience. It's going to be great, no doubt about it. And since you said that, because we are just about to conclude today's program, tell us about the light show this year. Sure. So, of course, we have more than a million lights. Um, if we stretched them all out end to end, they tell me that it would, it would be 30 miles long. <laughs> Nobody's going to check that, so I ought to say 60. <laughs> it's going to be 60 miles yeah, long. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there's always surprises every year. Um, this year, there's some really cool stuff. I was just texting uh, with John. John, um, who puts all the lights up, him and his team, and uh, Carl, who's orchestrating the music and the beats. And, oh, yeah. You know, it is, it is, um, this year's going to be better than ever. And of course, people who haven't been able to get out will be able to come do this. We even rigged it up so that all you have to do is, if you buy your tickets online, you can hold them up to the glass window and we can scan them through the window. So you don't even have to open your window if you wanted to come. So we're, um, it's a very much a family friendly event and a great way for people to celebrate the holidays together. Together. And it starts on Friday, November 13th. It's going to be our lucky day at Discovery <laughs> Park of America. Scott, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. I know you're enjoying the position, right? Loving every minute of it. We hope next year more doors open for us and we get over the hump here, but otherwise you're still moving forward. Absolutely. Inspiring children and adults to see beyond every single day. Scott, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for having me.
And that concludes this week's 30 Minutes program. We hope you enjoyed today's show. And, of course, we invite you to tune in again next week at this same time as we bring you topics and information of importance to our community. From all of us here at Thunderbolt Broadcasting, until we meet again next week, I'm Charles Show. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Start planning your visit to Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. And also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.